Welcome to part two of the DJI RS2 review. And this is the video that you guys have been asking for, for so long. Well, kinda, not really. Because I wanted to make part two with all the third party accessories and then make a definite decision if the RS2 is the perfect gimbal for my Canon C300 Mark III. Unfortunately, at this point, only two out of three accessories have arrived yet. And that is the Tilta extension grip as well as the small rig base plate. Unfortunately, the accessory I am most excited for is the Tilta advanced ring setup and that is nowhere to be found. I asked Tilta about it, but as I suspected, I just got a very generic answer and I have no idea when it will arrive. So in this video, I will focus on the small rig extended base plate because as I already said in part one, the one that comes with the gimbal is pretty much not usable with anything that's heavier than a really small mirrorless camera. So in this video, I will give you my opinion if that actually made any changes when using it with my C300 Mark III as well as the R5 with a really heavy 28 to 70 lens. And in part two of part two of this video, I will also talk about the back tilter extension handle if it's actually worth the very hefty price tag. And I will also show you a much more affordable alternative. And more on that after the intro. My name is Damien Cooper and welcome to Monkey Fix. So let's start with the small rig base plate. As I've already mentioned, you couldn't really use the original base plate because it sits up way up top. And whenever you have something a little bit heavier, then you got a lot of shake introduced into your footage and it's basically unusable. And since my Canon C300 Mark III is longer than the original plate, you can't even use a lens holder either. With a new fairly inexpensive small rig base plate that is specifically made for the DJI RS2, that is absolutely no problem problem at all anymore because this one is actually longer than my C300 Mark III. So I've used the R5 with a 28 to 70 on a gimbal with this plate in numerous different occasions. I actually had it filming out of a car when filming a commercial where we actually used a shot of a girl riding a motocross bike. And the footage is really smooth. There's no micro jitters, there's no shaking in it anymore. And also Belle used it on a couple of her shoots when she was using it with the R5 and a 28 to 70. And as far as I could tell, there wasn't any kind of shutter in it at all. So the footage was really smooth and really stable. And that was all without any kind of lens support because we just used it with the new base plate and just the camera on the cage. I also used a new base plate with my C300 Mark III and a 24 mm 1.4. When using this setup on a music video that I shot about a month ago, you could actually see every step in the footage when I was filming the lead singer, just basically walking towards the camera. So I tried to recreate this with my friend Salo and have her just walk towards the camera and me walking slowly backwards. And here you could actually see a big difference and all these micro jitters that you had in the corners before were really reduced. They're still there to a very slight extent, but this is definitely way better and 100% usable. And when adding a little bit of post stabilization, they were actually gone completely and that gave me a really smooth result. And again, this was without the lens holder and I tried to attach the lens holder at one point, but it didn't really fit that well. So I need to spend a little bit more time on it and I will do so in my part three DJI RS2 review. But when just comparing the original base plate to the small rig base plate, there was a big improvement. I also tried running with the setup a little bit just to see where the limitation lies. And this is not filmed in slow motion. It's all at 25 frames with a 1 50th of a shutter. And here, unfortunately, you could see a lot of jitters in the corners. Again, no lens holder and we have to see if that actually makes a difference in part three. But even here, when using a little bit of post stabilization, the footage looks really good and it's totally smooth. So yes, I can 100% recommend the small rig base plate and I will link it down in the description below for you to check out as well. Another really cool thing about the small rig base plate and that is one thing that I heavily criticized in part one of my review is that it now fits my Manfrotto 501 fluid head and that makes life so much easier when going from tripod to gimbal. 
I think the only thing that I can really criticize about the small rig base plate is that I find it too long now because when using it with the EOS R5 it really protrudes out from either the back or the front and even when using it with my Canon C300 it could actually be a little smaller but that is just a minor detail. And one quick thing to mention I also bought another accessory and that is a 15 millimeter rod clamp that you can actually attach to the base plate to attach a follow focus or a zoom focus for example and I briefly started testing this but I haven't tested it enough and I will do that in part 3 as well. So now moving on to the Theta extension handle and that is an accessory that Bell bought for her gimbal because I'm not 100% sold on the overall design of the Crane 3 or the Crane 3S but I do see its perks so anyway we went out and tested it for you. So what the grip extension does is basically gives you another grip on the back of the gimbal and that makes it so much easier to go into underslung mode but it also kind of mirrors the already existing grip with all its functionalities like the joystick, a mini display, you have a mode button, a record button, a menu button and you also have a focus wheel as well as one of the buttons to center your gimbal whenever you went off axis. But one of the coolest features for me is that it now features a cold shoe on top and that gives you a real option to mount an external monitor to it and that has always been a problem on various other gimbals like the Crane 3, the Crane 3S, the Crane 2S as well as the original DJI Ronin, Ronin S and so on and so forth. So now with a little help of a small rig monitor mount you can attach an external monitor directly on top of this extension grip and that actually works very well and now even when going into underslung you can quickly adjust the monitor and you have really great viewing angles from either underslung or just when using it in regular mode and I think just sitting on top of this extension grip is the perfect position for an external monitor. And that works well with the Canon C300 Mark III or the EOS R5 or basically any other camera. The overall design and feel of the grip feels very solidly and very high quality so when shooting with it you really feel like it's an original part and not really a third party accessory. The entire grip easily attaches via the NATO rails of either side of the DJI RS2. And this is not only there to attach the grip to the gimbal but it also powers the grip as well as establishes the connection between the grip and your gimbal. And when I first attached it I didn't really align the smart connectors the white ray so it didn't power on. So make sure that they are perfectly aligned and then everything should power on easily. So now when working with the gimbal it's so much easier to go directly into underslung and with this it's really easy to also control your gimbal while being in underslung because you have full access to the joystick, the mode buttons or if you have your camera connected to the gimbal you can also stop and start recording. But not only this, when moving from location to location it's so much easier to just transport the gimbal and you don't have to awkwardly hold it with both hands the entire time and you can basically just carry it around like a small suitcase. A lot of the times when filming in underslung mode I found myself having to adjust the gimbal via the joystick and that is very easy when just being in underslung having an external monitor connected and now being able to use the joystick. Also when coming up again and you want to center the camera by just double pressing the trigger button on your index finger it just immediately snaps back into the default position and having all this in the right hand is actually very convenient. One thing I didn't really like was the very tiny LCD display up top because it doesn't really display anything useful. It shows you a very tiny numbers the mode you're in but everything that it displays it just makes more sense to use the original way bigger LCD screen that is on the original handle. So working with the Tilta extension grip was such a step up to the original design. Not only is it so much faster and more convenient going into underslung but also the position of your external monitor is such a game changer for me. But now let's start the real talk. What does this thing cost? Bell paid 250 euros for it and that was when it was still on sale. So I think she paid 169 dollars for it and then there was about a 30 dollar shipping fee. Then she had to pay import tax as well as some custom handling fees. So overall the entire thing cost her 250 euros which is around 300 dollars. So that is almost half of the price of the entire gimbal. So is this heavy price tag worth the money? So for me the best features of this grip are that you can easily go into underslung mode, that you can carry it by your side and most of all that you can attach an external monitor right into your field of view. But I could have had this way cheaper too. 
The DJI RS2 already ships with an extension plate and that is usually used to have the mini tripod that sits underneath the gimbal to attach onto this extension plate and then use the same underslung mode as well as carrying features without having all the capabilities of controlling your gimbal or attaching an external monitor to it. What you could do, however, is just use a generic handle for about $20 on Amazon, then attach a small recall shoe mount that is basically around $3, and then you can attach an external monitor as well, and the only thing you're missing is all of the smart functions. So here it really depends on how many of these features you actually use. If you constantly connect your camera to the DJI RS2, having the record button on top is actually a pretty cool thing. I never really do that and I just start and stop the recording by just pressing on my camera. I also don't attach a DJI follow focus, so I won't use the focusing wheel either. So overall having to pay 250 euros for something that I could get for $25 just to be able to use the joystick and the menu button, which I can still do with my left hand, for me personally, is definitely not worth it. Maybe you also attach something to the smart connector pins on the NATO rails on the side. I have no such third party accessories or something from DJI and I wouldn't even know what to attach to it. So me personally, I never used them before and I probably won't use them in the future either. If you have some accessories attached to it, then this might actually make sense for you. I don't, so for me, this is also a feature that I wouldn't use. Granted, the overall design and feel feels way more professional and of higher quality when using the extension grip instead of just some generic parts of Amazon. But if that is worth $200 or even more, depending on where you live, that's basically just up to you. All right, so I hope this video helped you make an informed decision of buying either the DJI RS2 altogether or just the small rig base plate or the DJI extension grip. And if you wanna see part three of this review where I will be reviewing the full advanced Tilta ring setup once it finally got here, then make sure to subscribe to this channel and also enable notifications or even better, follow me on Instagram because I will be announcing this in my stories and usually when I get new equipment like this, I will also do some story testing in my Instagram stories. So make sure to follow me on Instagram as well. Also, if you're already here, make sure to give this video a thumbs up because it really helps the channel grow. And I hope to see you on the next one.